A cordial greeting. Today is Thursday, July 24, 2025. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. We continue to keep an eye on the Atlantic area to identify areas of possible cyclonic development, especially as we approach the most active months in terms of cyclonic activity, which are typically August, September, and October. And while in the northern waters of the Gulf of Mexico we are monitoring an area of bad weather that has a low probability of cyclonic development during the next five days, as it moves westward, for now, the probability of development remains at 10%. In case there is any change in the forecast, I will record a new update for you. But in today's video, I would like to focus on the tropical Atlantic area, where we will be monitoring several tropical waves coming off Africa that could find marginally favorable conditions for cyclonic development, especially at the beginning of August. And in the first part of the video, I will talk about a strong tropical wave that is moving west and is located near longitude 35 degrees west. And although at the moment this tropical wave is not expected to have cyclonic development, some models keep it quite active and conditions will be a little more favorable for development compared to what Invest 94 was. And it is important to emphasize that for now, the National Hurricane Center has not marked this area with probabilities of cyclonic development, although in my opinion, I think that at least this tropical wave has a 10% probability of cyclonic development. However, this is not official and I will be keeping an eye on the next tropical outlooks from the National Hurricane Center. If we zoom in on the infrared satellite image, we can see the rotation associated with this tropical wave. And the difference between this tropical wave and what was in Vest 94 is that it is surrounded by a little more moisture and the conditions just east of the Lesser Antilles will be a little more favorable for development. This is mainly due to the fact that we have a Kelvin wave that passed through the tropical Atlantic region and this leaves less hostile conditions for cyclonic development. However, the probabilities for development remain low because the tropical Atlantic continues to be dominated by Saharan dust and dry, stable air. But thanks to the Kelvin wave, you can see that the projection indicates that by early next week, wind shear across the eastern Caribbean will be below normal, unlike what we currently have, where wind shear is stronger than normal. But the main impediment to the development of this tropical wave is the Saharan dust and the dry air. For example, here we have the extent of Saharan dust in yellow and orange, which, as is typical for the month of July, influences atmospheric conditions across the tropical Atlantic and interferes with the possible development of tropical waves. In addition, this Saharan dust is accompanied by quite a lot of dry and stable air, which is identified in brown in this image, which as you can see remains to the north and northwest of the tropical wave and will be the main impediment for development. That is precisely what the European model's projection shows us, where during the morning hours on Friday, the tropical wave is approaching longitude 45 degrees west. And you can see how the model projects that the dry air and Saharan dust will be affecting the circulation of the tropical wave and limiting the formation of thunderstorms. However, there is a less likely scenario in which the tropical wave could maintain a somewhat broader field of moisture and in this case, some type of cyclonic development could occur. And unlike the European model, that is what the latest runs of the American model show where the tropical wave remains with an area of moisture that protects it from the dry air that is to the north and northwest of the axis of the wave. This is why the American model in its latest runs continues to show the possible development of a tropical depression during this weekend as it moves west until it reaches the Caribbean at the beginning of next week. And for example, in the latest run it shows a tropical storm reaching the arc of the Lesser Antilles. But it is important that if you live in the Eastern Caribbean, you should not worry because the American model is the only one that currently shows cyclonic development. For example, according to the European model, the dry and stable air will prevent this tropical wave from developing into a tropical cyclone. In addition, the other models, such as the German model, although it has a strong tropical wave moving over the northeast of the Caribbean for Monday or Tuesday of next week, this model does not develop a tropical cyclone before reaching the Caribbean. Just like the projection of the United Kingdom model which has the strong tropical wave crossing over the east and northeast of the Caribbean, without developing into a tropical depression. So this is why the projection of the American model at the moment should not be considered reliable, even more so when most of the members of the American model do not develop a tropical depression or tropical storm, although I must mention that between 5-10% to of them do develop a weak tropical depression or tropical storm during this weekend, while the set of members of the European model, although some of them do have some type of development during the next 72 hours, the reality is that most of the members do not develop a tropical depression and those that do, weaken it considerably before reaching the Eastern Caribbean. So in reality, at the moment there is no reason to worry about this tropical wave, although we do recognize that the atmospheric conditions as it moves towards the Caribbean, will be a little more favorable than what Invest 94 was facing, and we will be watching to see if eventually the National Hurricane Center marks this area with low probabilities of development, 
but at the moment it seems that the experts at the National Hurricane Center trust that the dry and stable air will be enough for this tropical wave not to have cyclonic development. Now, in this last part of the video, I would like to talk a bit about how sea surface temperature anomalies have changed across the main cyclonic development zone and in the tropical Atlantic. And I will also talk about how conditions will be for early August, since there is a possibility that we will continue to see strong tropical waves coming off Africa and some of them could have some potential for cyclonic development. The most important change we have seen over the past few weeks is that the main cyclonic development area has seen a warming of sea surface temperatures, and at the moment they are above normal, an important change from what we had in the months of May and June. But also importantly, see that the subtropical Atlantic area continues with temperature anomalies well above normal. And although as we can see in this graph, the main cyclonic development zone has seen significant warming over the past few weeks. Currently on average, sea surface temperatures are well above normal, when by mid-June they were near or below normal. So we will be monitoring whether this warming continues over the next few weeks, as it could have major influences on how much cyclonic activity we can experience during the peak of the season. Still, with the warming of the waters in the main development zone, the distribution of sea surface temperatures is not yet optimal to have a very active season, mainly because the subtropical Atlantic area continues with temperatures that are warmer than most of the tropical Atlantic area, and this can generate a quite stable atmosphere across the main development zone and help to limit the formation of tropical cyclones. In addition, it is anticipated that for early August, the Azores high will be stronger than usual, and this pattern favors dry air descending from high latitudes toward the tropical Atlantic zone, creating conditions that are not very favorable for the development of tropical cyclones. However, from time to time with the passage of Kelvin waves or favorable phases of the Madden-Julian oscillation, we could see attempts at development of some tropical waves coming off Africa towards the end of July and the beginning of August, and that will be happening during the first and second week of August where a favorable phase of the Madden-Julian oscillation is forecast to move across the Atlantic and perhaps create somewhat more favorable conditions for the potential development of tropical waves. In fact, if we look at the long term, some models like the ensemble of the European model for the end of July and the beginning of August mark the central tropical Atlantic area with between 40 to 50 percent probability of developing a tropical depression, which gives us indications that the peak of the season is approaching, and at some point we will see the development of some cyclone in this area. Although I have to acknowledge that the dry air and atmospheric stability in the main development zone is very likely to be an important factor and help ensure that the hurricane season is not very active. Now then, remember that this can change over the next few weeks and the important thing is to stay alert to any changes. So with this, I say goodbye. I will record other videos as this tropical wave progresses and we will continue to keep an eye on any developments, including the northern Gulf of Mexico area. But before I go, I wanted to invite you to like this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel by clicking the red button and click on the bell so that you receive notifications when I record new videos. I hope you all have an excellent day. That's all for now. See you later.